Welcome to the informational webinar for the 2022 Globe International Virtual Science Symposium, or IVSS. Um, here on this home screen is the website, um, www.globe.gov slash science dash symposium. Um, so we'll be talking a bit more about that website later on in the webinar, but uh, Amy, if you wanna put that link in the chat for everyone as well, that would be great. Um, if anyone has any questions along the way, please feel free to use the question and answer the Q&A option or the uh, chat box in Zoom. And um, we'll be taking questions at the end or Amy may respond to you with the answers that way as well. So um, the education team at uh, the Globe Implementation Office is the primary team that works on IVSS each year. Um, the, currently, the education team consists of Amy Barfield, uh, who is an outreach and training specialist, and myself, Emma Hagen, and I am a program specialist. Um, to get in touch with us, you can uh, use the email here, globeivss at ucar.edu. Uh, that will go to both of us. Um, we also receive additional support from other members at the Globe Implementation Office throughout IVSS. So if you'd like to see a full list of staff members, um, you can go to globe.gov and click on the About page, and that will tell you a bit more about the Globe Implementation Office. And these slides will also be shared afterwards as well for anyone who wants to click on the links that way. So what is the IVSS? Uh, the IVSS is an online symposium for students to share and discuss GLOBE research with other students, STEM professionals, and the GLOBE community as a whole. Um, it's open to all GLOBE students, grades kindergarten through 16, and we actually are scoring projects based off of grade level, so there's different rubrics for each grade level, which I'll show a bit more of in a bit. The, uh, 2022 will be the ninth year of IVSS. So for the 2021 IVSS, uh, we ended up uh, having 242 projects submitted from uh, 20 globe countries. Um, and you can see the breakdown here in this first table. Um, out of those 242 projects, we had 223 pass triage. Uh, the triage process for uh, the IVSS is something that GLOBE, the education team works on. So that is where GIO will, will evaluate projects to make sure they aren't missing any required elements before sending off to judges. So we just check for those required elements and then they can move on through the process. On the right hand table here, you will see the um, breakdown by region and country of the top scoring projects. So these are the projects that received four stars and two badges. We had 79 projects total from 16 countries. A huge part of the IVSS is our volunteer judges. So the judges are uh, scientists, teachers, and community members from all over the world who volunteer their time to judge student research projects. So Thank you. If you're on this call and you've judged uh, with us before, and we hope to see you um, for judging in the 2022 IVSS as well. Uh, this graph that we have here shows the judges breakdown um, by year and region. So um, as you can see each year, the number of judges has increased with 2021 last year being our biggest uh, judge volunteer judge pool that we've had, which was really exciting. We actually got the opportunity to have three to four judges scoring every student project, which is wonderful um, to have that many people on it. These uh, bars are stacked bars by region. So up here at the top in the light blue is the North America region. So judges from the North America region. Below that in orange is the Near East and North Africa region. The Latin America and Caribbean region is below that in green and then Europe in yellow. Asia and Pacific is shown below that in red. And then finally we have Africa in the darker blue color. Um, so as you can see here, actually each of the regions, the number of judges has um, slowly increased from 2016 to 2021. So it's great to see that um, across the regions we're getting more judges as well. Here is the 2022 IVSS timeline. So the first thing we have on here is the informational webinar, which is today, uh, this October 6th. 
Uh, please keep an eye out for additional webinars that may be coming uh, in between today and when uh, reports are being accepted. So just keep an eye out for that notice. Reports will be accepted from early January until March 11th of 2022. Then the judging webinar will be on March 30th of 2022. And this is an informational webinar for anyone who's volunteering to judge to learn more about the judging process. Then judges will be uh, scoring projects from March 30th to April 6th, which is the judging period. And then finally, our Earth Day celebration and announcement um, of the uh, for the live drawing for stipends will be on Earth Day, which is April 22nd. So for an IVSS project, uh, what are the project requirements that we expect? Uh, this is what uh, you'll need in order to be considered in the IVSS. Uh, so there are five elements. The first is an abstract or summary of the research. Next is the research report. Um, we also ask if students apply for an additional badge that they give an explanation on how they've earned that badge. Uh, Students are uh, expected to give a presentation as well, which I'll explain a little bit more of on the next slide. And then uh, all students or projects must uh, have a photo release form signed. And you can find that on the GLOBE website um, at the link given here, which is globe.gov slash support slash media slash media dash release. Um, and I'll show another place to find those photo releases here in a little bit as well. So presentation details, uh, it's really important to, for students to learn how to communicate their science. Uh, so we have a few methods that we accept for doing that. Uh, the first is a poster, which is shown here in the photo of um, two girls presenting their research through a poster. We also accept a narrated presentation, a video link, and actually new to last year is uh, we started accepting ArcGIS story map links as well as a way for students to uh, share their science. And so uh, there is a webinar on that from 2021 that I was actually a co-presenter on. So I'll talk a little bit more. I'll share that webinar here in a little bit, but um, there is some more information on how your students could create a story map too. So drawing for stipends, um, this is part of the IVSS. The uh, high scoring projects are entered into a drawing to be considered for a stipend. Um, so in order to be entered into this drawing, the project must earn a four star student research project. Um, it, so it must be a four star project and then it must receive at least two additional badges as well. And I'll talk a bit more about those badges here in a little bit. Um, but those are the two requirements to be considered. And then projects that are selected from the drawing will receive funds to help offset the cost of attendance at the GLOBE annual meeting and or for materials to further students' science education. Uh, so if you needed a new piece of equipment, um, you could use the funding from that stipend to do so. Students who have been selected from the 2022 IVSS or the U.S. Student Research Symposium get the opportunity to attend the student experience at the annual meeting. So uh, that's those are the only students that we have at the annual meeting and they're from those two projects. Here is a list of the 2021 IVSS drawing winners. So these are uh, the projects that were selected for the 2021 IVSS. And these are from our top scoring projects. So especially if you're new or even if you're not, uh, definitely recommend uh, reviewing those projects, um, taking a look at them and seeing what a four-star project looks like. So now I'm gonna go over the website a little bit and the quick link to get to the website is shown here at the bottom. This is uh, www.globe.gov slash science dash symposium. Um, so make sure you can go and check out the website yourself as I'm going along in here. You can also follow the uh, trail up here at the top. So if you're on the home, then you can go to news and events, then meetings and symposium, and then virtual science symposia. And then you'll be able to select the 2022 IVSS from there. So the, uh, this is the homepage. This is what you'll see when you first uh, get onto this uh, page. It's just gonna have some general information about 
this year's IVSS along with the timeline, which if you were to scroll down, you'd see the timeline there. The important part on this website is that you do have uh, these uh, additional pages included. So that's what we're going to do now is we're going to go over each of the additional pages. And this navigation bar here on the left side of the page will be on the website when you're there as well. The first page I'll talk about is the instructions for submitting a report. Uh, this is where you'll be able to find all of the requirements and what you'll need in order to submit your report. Um, so make sure to look at that page. Um, as I talked about with the photo release forms, you can also find the link to the photo release page on the instructions website as well. The next one is the rubrics tab. So this, as uh, I had mentioned, the, there are separate rubrics for each grade band. So um, grades kindergarten through second grade has its own rubric, grades third through fifth, um, grades sixth through eighth, and then grades nine through 16 each have their own rubric. So if you wanted to see a bit more about each of those rubrics, you could go to um, this page and open those up. I'm not gonna talk about the badges page because I will talk about that uh, in a little bit here. So the next one I'll talk about is the resources page. This is really, really helpful. It has lots of information on it, um, lots of resources that we have created for um, new or existing IVSS projects. So if you are brand new to IVSS, this is gonna have a lot of um, tips or templates or information for you along with links to the previous virtual um, symposium pages if you would like to look at those. Uh, for example, uh, two of the resources that we do have on here that I would like to highlight are we have a research template, um, research report template uh, by each grade band. So if you wanted to see um, what elements should be required kind of in your research report, uh, that you can use this template to um, get started with that. Um, on the right here, you'll see an example poster and that's another resource that we have is we do have um, some example posters, templates that are a bit more fun that students could use in order to uh, share their science. The next page I'll talk about is our FAQ page. If you have a question about IVSS and want to see if it's something that's been answered before, uh, please visit our FAQ page. And if you don't see your question answered or if you just want to get in touch with us directly, again, that email alias to do so is globeivss at ucar.edu. The final page I will talk about um, is the 2022 IVSS judging pages page. So um, if you are interested in judging the IVSS, this is where you would go to do so. This will have some general information for you. And if you scroll down, you'll actually uh, see a judging form. Uh, this judging form is where you can go to uh, sign up to judge for the 2022 IVSS. And you can sign up for that now if interested. Uh, we will be contacting you if you sign up early, we'll be contacting you before the judging period to ensure that you would still like to judge as well. So uh, feel free to go ahead and fill that out if you are interested in judging. Now I'll talk a little bit about the report elements um, for each of the grade bands. So I'll start off with the report elements for high schoolers and undergraduate students. So that would be grades nine through 16 or ages 14 years old or older. Uh, the bolded elements are the required elements in the project report. So out of the report elements, we'll start with uh, the title, which is a required element, an abstract or summary, which is also required, and the research question or questions, which is required as well. Um, we have next the introduction and a review of the literature. After that, the research methods, which is also required. And then results, discussion, um, and then conclusion, which conclusion is required as well, bibliography and citations, and your optional badge selection. There is a star on research methods because please ensure that you include GLOBE data. Um, GLOBE data must be required in the research report in order for it to be considered in the IVSS. So include a screenshot of the data you entered onto the website on that project as well. Uh, you can use data from other sources, but GLOBE data is the minimum requirement. 
So for going on to the report elements for middle schoolers, you'll see it looks really similar. The only difference is that the introduction does not need the review of any literature. So uh, there's, um, you don't need that literature review for a middle school project. Um, and middle schoolers are grades six through eight or ages 11 through 14 years old. And uh, then report elements for late elementary students, which is grades three through five or ages eight through 11. Um, as you'll see here, the only difference between this and the middle school report elements is that uh, an abstract isn't necessarily required. It could just be a summary of the project. And then finally, we have report elements for the early elementary students, and that is grades kindergarten through second or ages five through eight. And the difference between this one and the late elementary students um, is there is no requirement for a bibliography or citations. So for all of these grade bands um, from undergraduate students through early elementary students, GLOBE data is required. So please make sure to use that GLOBE data and include a screenshot if you're entering data onto the website. As mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit further about the IVSS badges. So there's two groups of badges that I'll discuss. The first one is the merit-based student research badge. So all projects will receive this badge. Students can earn between zero and four stars on their project and receive uh, the respective badge to their score. Um, a zero star badge is usually a, um, a project that did not pass triage. So that will be um, something that the education team is reviewing. Uh, there's no limit to the number of projects that can earn the top ranking four-star project. So if you've got a great project, you can guaranteed get a four-star score on that. Um, so there's no limit to how many projects get that four-star score. Um, the additional science badges, these are the optional badges that we have. Uh, students need to choose to apply for these badges when they're uploading their project. Students should describe how each badge was earned in their report as well. So they'll need to apply for it and also describe how it was earned. Students can earn up to three out of the six additional badges, which I'll be going over the additional badges here in a bit. Um, and a minimum of two additional awarded badges are required to be a part of the drawing. So to be a part of the drawing, um, they'll need to have that four star merit based student research badge and two of the additional badges as well. So as for the merit-based student research badge, uh, there are uh, the different stars, as I had mentioned. So a one-star project is considered insufficient for the IVSS. Um, this report is missing significant information or does not contain all five of the required elements. Um, a two-star badge just needs some improvement. So the report may be incomplete or need additional clarification. Um, or it might be missing one of one or more of the required elements. Um, a three-star project is considered good. This is this is really a pretty good project. Um, it contains all the required elements and it's written clearly, but it just could use a bit more information or explanation. But uh, it still is a, a really good project. And then a four-star project is considered exceptional. So the report goes above and beyond the expectations and is clear and concise. Um, this is really just a, a really well done student research project. And again, the five required elements are um, the presentation of your project, along with the report. Um, you'll also need to give a uh, abstract or summary based off of your grade band, you'll need to give that. Then you'll also need an explanation of any additional badges that you're applying for. And finally, the photo release form, which is required as well. So as for the optional badges, um, there are six optional badges. So the first one is I am a collaborator. Uh, this is a badge that's earned for projects that show collaboration um, with students from the same school or from schools around the world. It just shows that they have collaborated on this project and worked with others well. The I make an impact badge uh, is a badge that students will receive if they have a research question that makes connection between local and global impacts in their community. Um, 
The IMS STEM professional badge clearly is given to students who clearly describe how they've worked with a STEM professional to enhance um, their project. And I am an engineer badge, which is the badge for this year's theme, which I'll talk about on the next slide, uh, is given to students who have uh, described an engineering problem and used engineering solutions uh, through their report, their research. I am a data scientist badge is given to projects that uh, do a really good job of analyzing data um, and include uh, other data sources as well, or really just do a good job of comparing data. I am a STEM storyteller badge is given to students that share their research in a creative way or uh, di are displaying their research very creatively. So um, if they're really sharing the story of their research, uh, they can be considered for this badge. So the uh, 2022 IVSS theme this year, and this is the second year that we are using a theme again, is uh, engineering solutions for a changing climate. Um, the I am an engineer badge will be the badge that students can receive for this year's theme, and that's the badge that um, will be associated. So students are encouraged to think creatively about engineering and solving environmental issues through engineering solutions, especially related to climate change. So uh, to clarify that a bit further, projects uh, should use engineering as a method for creating solutions to a problem. Once again, we will be accepting projects in five languages, uh, English, Spanish, French, Arabic, and Croatian. If you do submit a report in a language other than English, and it is possible, uh, please include a trans an English translation in the same document as well, in case we don't have enough judges to help the and to help the English speaking organizers. So if it is possible for you to include an English translation, please do, but we do accept projects in all five of those languages. In 2021, we had five uh, IVSS webinars. Uh, the first one was a globe data science introduction and question and answer. The next one was mapping your globe data with Esri ArcGIS, and that was one that I was a co-presenter on. And as mentioned, we do accept uh, projects with ArcGIS story map. So uh, please check that one out if you are interested uh, there. The next is how to create an effective science poster, which was a dual language webinar in English and Spanish. After that, we had how to develop a good research question, another dual language webinar in English and American Sign Language. And finally, we, our final webinar was STEM storytelling from an Apache point of view. And these were all wonderful webinars. I encourage everyone to check them out. You can find them on the resources page on our IVSS page, or they are directly linked here. They are also on the YouTube uh, channel, the GLOBE YouTube channel. So new in 2022, these are actually kind of continuations from last year, we are still accepting archived GLOBE data if you're unable to collect new data yourself. So that was something that we had opened up last year in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we are still going to continue, continue accepting that archived data from GLOBE. ArcGIS story map will also be accepted for a project's presentation as mentioned. And then we're also keeping the article ID as a search option for projects to make it easy for uh, people to find certain projects. A few common questions that we receive, um, we're gonna go over a couple of those just to get things started and then I'll take more questions at the end as well. So first question is who can judge projects? We put a minimum of one STEM professional on each project. Um, other judges can be teachers, graduate students, community members, or alumni. Really, if you're interested in judging a project, we'd love to have you. So please check out that judging page on the website. Judges have to be a part of the Globe International STEM Network, or GISN. No. So if a scientist or other STEM professional doesn't have a login for globe.gov, we have a generic STEM professional account that they can use. Um, this is a great way for GISN members uh, who are existing members to participate, but uh, we accept uh, general STEM professionals as well. It's great to have any STEM professional involved. Why aren't the instructions translated into more languages? Uh, we need volunteers to translate them. So if you're able to translate any of the materials, 
we can add them to the website. Uh, instructions are currently translated in Spanish and Arabic at the moment. Do I have to pick optional badges to be eligible for the drawing? Yes, uh, all students receive the Student Research Merit Badge. That is the uh, badge based off of stars, so one through four stars. But students must also select the two additional badges to be eligible for the drawing. They should describe how uh, they earned those badges in their report as well. My students have never participated in a science fair or symposium. Can they take part? Yes, definitely. We'd love to have new people. We have a lot of resources available for new participants, so please join us. Can younger kids enter a project? Uh, yes, we have grade-specific guidelines for students starting from kindergarten through undergraduate. Uh, we also have a webinar all about uh, kindergarten through fourth grade or ages five through eight projects, so check out that webinar on the resources page of the website as well. Again, here is this uh, 2022 IVSS timeline uh, for in case you wanted to see it one more time. Um, again, today is the informational webinar. We may have additional webinars as well. Reports will be accepted from early January until the 11th of March. Uh, the judging webinar will be on March 30th, which will also start the judging period continuing through April 6th. And then the Earth Day celebration and announcement of the um, projects for stipends is on Earth Day, which is April 22nd. For more information, again, here is the website link, uh, www.globe.gov slash science dash symposium. And there is the trail as well. So if you just wanted to go to globe.gov and then click on news and events, you can then go to meetings and symposia and then virtual science symposia. And finally, if you'd like to reach um, out to Amy and myself, you can use that email alias globeivss at upar.edu. That's everything I have for today. So um, Amy and I are happy to take some questions. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I just saw one question come through. Will the 2022 IVSS be virtual? Yes, it is a virtual symposium. So um, everything that we do for the IVSS is virtual. I see a question come through another, will the annual meeting be held virtually? Um, at the moment, uh, we did announce the dates for the annual meeting. So please keep an eye out for updates from that either in the news brief or on the email through a news blast. Um, we will be sharing more updates about that in the future. What is the photo release? Uh, the photo release is a document that we need to have in order to uh, publish reports on our website. Uh, and if um, students are in person for the annual meeting, we would need that uh, to take photos of their research as well. So Amy, do you wanna clarify on the photo release any further? Um, yeah, so since we are working with students, um, we do require that uh, the students give us permission to use their photos, which are often included in reports. So oftentimes students will include pictures of themselves in their reports. Um, and that student or that photo release just ensures that we um, have permission from the student and their parent or legal guardian um, that the when the report gets published and the photo goes along with it, that um, that, that is allowed. Um, I see another question It says some of the students um, can express in their mother language better than English or other. Can't it be uh, managed for such? Volunteer judge can translate it for evaluation. So that is a great question. Thank you for that. Um, yes, we do allow projects to be translated or to be submitted in English, Spanish, French, Arabic, and Croatian. So if your students would like to participate, but English is not their native language um, and they don't feel comfortable writing a report in English, they're welcome to submit it. And we will hopefully have judges who will be able to judge those in those native languages. All right. Um, well, not seeing too many other questions come through. 
um, we will go ahead and conclude this webinar for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. The recording will be available on the website on at uh, globe.gov slash science dash symposium. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to globeivss.ucar.edu. Again, thank you so much and take care.